What's up guys, Bloodshed here, bringing you a first impressions video for Pagan Online. Now this is the first day it came out of early access. I've been following this game for some time. I never played the alpha. I like to play uh, games, especially the ARPGs, on stream the first time I play through it so chat can get my initial first reactions. Let's jump right in. Pagan has some sick combat, very clean, very polished responsive gameplay it's almost like the game battle right okay so that's a good and a bad thing because a lot of people might not like the wasad to move around i personally got used to it after a one or two hours of playing it i kind of got on board with the thing just like i did when i used to play battle right battle right was like a arena style moba brawler super fun to play responsive punishing mechanics it's not so spammy you kind of think about your abilities and you only have so much resource you have to make like a decision on what you're doing. I like the gameplay tremendously, needless to say. As you level up, you unlock all your abilities, just like most RPGs, I suppose. There is an option to plug in a controller. I did try that. It runs buttery smooth, so if you want to use a controller instead, you can play it. It's kind of built for mouse and keyboard, but it does, it does run really well on a controller. The only problem is you can't click to move like we're really accustomed to in like Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. Like I said, there is a learning curve there and I got over it just like I got over it with Battle Right, but it might be a deal breaker for some people. So just bear that in mind. It's $30 currently uh, for early access. So it's an early access title, which means they're going to be adding things to the game. I talked to some people from the team. And let's just say they have some cool systems in the pipeline unofficially, officially. So gameplay wise, I have zero issues. It runs amazing. I love the combat. Another downside for people might be the art style. It's like a more aggressive torchlight, which is kind of cool. It's kind of an edgier version of that, but it's very colorful. It's not so gothic, which we're accustomed to from like Diablo 2 era. But you know, if it doesn't bother you, which it doesn't bother me, I just want a good game to play. I just want good combat. Okay, so I'm here in like the main hub area. Uh, the first thing to note is you wanna know what the game's all about. You probably saw some gameplay in the intro and you wanna know what is going on. So this is like Warframe. If you've never played Warframe, your goal basically is to go out, shoot and loot, right? Melee, get some loot, get some upgrades. You get a lot of parts to upgrade your gear and your abilities and then you unlock more warframes right more powerful warframes with more powerful abilities so when you start in pagan you can pick between anya she's like this um vampiric whip type character right life leech and bats and all kinds of stuff um you saw it in the gameplay you can pick between this guy he's like the barbarian right you can see some of his abilities here barb smash whirlwind jumps and um here's his like ultimate i guess or his like his last ability, wham, right? So it's him, her, and Istok. He's like the uh, Midgar tank, rune word type character, right? You can see he's like, you know, he's a tank basically. He has some cool abilities too. Here's his F ability, his Thunder Fist, wham, okay? So you can pick between these three characters and then you level them up, right? So that's your starting Warframe. Just like in Warframe, you have the three to choose from. And then you unlock other characters with various abilities. It's almost like, you know, a different suit in a way if you look at it like that. I really, really like this mechanic. It's super cool to me. It kind of gives more context to the game and um, it makes it very cohesive. And um, this is my favorite, Masha. And she has like, um, she's like a dancer type class and twirls in and out of combat and things like that. So you can't actually play these characters. You have to unlock them just like Warframes. So. I'm leveling up, trying to unlock more classes. I can't even really show gameplay, but at least you do have previews of what they look like. All the ability previews right here. Not only do you go grind, level up your characters, unlock other cool characters, you can unlock customization options for each character. So like this is Masha and this is a skin you can unlock, like a pirate skin. And then you can use your gold and unlock more cool colors of the skins. There's also like emotes and titles and banners that are coming soon. Again, it's still in early access and the game's working. It's really fleshed out and it's pretty cool, man. I like this kind of thing. You can reward players without giving them power. You can just give us cosmetics and it, it makes it really interesting, you know? It really changes exactly how everything looks. At the end of the video, I might go through all of them and show you all the different skins, but um, we'll move on from here. You can craft stuff here at the forge 
And as you kill enemies, you get blueprints and you can put the blueprints in the forge. So let, let's take, for instance, a weapon blueprint. Uh, let me open up my stash here and I can grab stuff from my stash to craft. You put it in there and then it'll, it'll basically craft items for you. And, you. and there's like rarities. So from, you know, low quality to flawless quality, you can see all the gold stars. So there's like depth there within the items itself. Um, I think like in PoE, you look for like, um, I forget what they're called, but they're like multicolored or multi-linked white items. And it's kind of the same thing here. You look for the flawless quality, depending on what you're going for. Then you hit craft and go ahead and crafts your item for you. And there's another cool feature. You can just take this item as is, or you can reforge it. Okay. It costs more resources and gold and stuff to reforge, but it brings up another screen. And you can reforge it up to five times total. Reforge, reforge, reforge. And then you get to look at all of them in a row. It's kind of daunting when you get a new game, but this way you can take your time and pick which one you want the most. So the first one we got was a 398. It rolled poison and lightning damage. And then the second one got poison fortitude, dexterity fortitude, dexterity, fire, lightning. So depending on your build or what you're going for, you might want a different ability, right? Poison and fortitude. I might just go for the highest multiplier since um, I do get benefit from dexterity, but I'm gonna go just for the shining hex whip. Pick it and then boom. So it's kind of cool because you're always thinking about crafting. Some of the best items I have on my character are legit from crafting. I really like the system and like they can give you um, interesting quest rewards, you know, for doing missions, for doing various activities. You can see these are the recipes. These are the blueprints, so you can get like legendary crafting weapons from it. You can also craft artifacts, which I'm still learning about. Here's some more materials, right? Lots of stuff. This is my this is my like inventory. And then you have a stash space right here. So you can kind of put stuff and you can buy more stash space with in-game gold. Let's talk about that for a second. As of right now, there's no cash shop. Everything is earned in game by just grinding. You just work hard, unlock your stuff. There's not even a cosmetic. There's literally no cash shop. And I don't know about the future, but right now they have no plans for it. It's super refreshing to have everything just built into the game. I'm super happy, okay? Like I'm actually unlocking stuff with just my own hard work and in-game gold. I don't know what this is. I think this is like a gear locker. I'm assuming it's some kind of wardrobe feature, but it's still in early access. This is your ability section. This is where you can take abilities and upgrade them with materials you find in the game by just playing the game. Every time you level, you get a potency point and then you use that. So. You know, my name's Bloodshed. This is the Blood Heart ability, so I love it. I upgraded this as far as I could go. If I want to keep going, I have to use one of my legendary crafting materials. So you can see, like, these are all rare materials. I only have so much of them, and I'm just holding off on it and seeing how I want to proceed from here. This is, like, the Vampire Bat ability that I've been using. If I want to upgrade it further, I need to get some more legendary materials and take it to the top tier. So... It's kind of cool. You can kind of focus on your build and what you're going for. There are legendaries in the game, but I haven't got one yet. Um, level 14, still haven't seen one. I can almost guarantee they're going to add some kind of skill tree in addition to the game. And um, it's going to be awesome when there's even going to be even more ways besides legendaries, besides abilities and stuff like that. I bet you it's going to get more in depth and everything like that. It looks really promising. There's a lore section that's coming soon right here. Lore archive. This is like a store manager vendor where you can um, sell your items, but you can actually sell your items directly from the interface itself. Like you can just be right here. And if you don't want this anymore, you just shift click it and uh, control click it and then it sells it for you. Anything from this hub, you can actually do from wherever you're standing. You don't have to actually run there, um, which is kind of cool. I still run there, especially for the video and I, maybe RP reasons. I don't know. It feels nice to run to places still, but you don't actually have to. You can see on the top here, you can just click on whatever you want within the hub itself. This is my gold, glory points. And they said like end game, we're going to be competing whoever has the most glory points. So it's all your heroes, your combined glory, but they might have other type of leaderboard type systems built in. All right, let's talk about some end game activities or basically just some activities that you'll do when playing. And when it's all said and done, they're gonna have a 50 hour campaign built into the game alone. And there's different difficulties. You can see right here, normal difficulty, 
hard difficulty and master difficulty. And you can do the whole campaign on different difficulties. You can do all the missions, assassin, everything you can do on different difficulties and you get more rewards for it. You can see all the acts right here. Looks like they're all the way down to act eight, the fog. And then there's missions on top of the campaign. So you can see that's kind of like adventure mode and it tells you your hero power. So if you want to do this one, you need 900. This is 1.4. My current hero power up here is 2.6 thousand might. So I'm almost in this territory, missions 11 to 15. I'm a little behind gearing, but that's what that's for. So this is the gold right here. So if you want to reroll all these missions in this tier, you can, but you don't have to. So let's say we wanted to do this mission right here, right? You click on it. It tells you your rewards for normal. It tells you your rewards for hard or master. Um, it does show you what kind of enemies are there. So if you have like a zombie quest to do, you'll know that you can do this one and do your other quest. There are side quests called hunts and we'll cover that in a second. So yeah, you can do the campaign to your heart's content. You can go do missions and they're more specific to your rewards. Um, this is like a timed event. You can see the hourglass. Some of them have a little defend area. You have to defend a certain point or you have to attack certain things. They're pretty cool, right? And then you can always reroll them with gold. And again, I have, I have a lot of gold at level 14, so this isn't a big deal. There are big gold slinks though, but we'll cover that. And um, assassinations are really awesome. They give you points to unlock other characters and really important things. These are like the big dog missions that you want to go for. On top of those three ways to play, assassinations, missions, and the campaign, these are the hunts that I was talking about. You can pick these up. These are just like quests that are in the background. So it might be like collect 50 zombie eyes, you accept it, and then now that's just like a contract or just like a in the background, like a, like a mission on top of a mission, right? And then you get gold for that or other various rewards. Um, I'm sure they'll add different types of rewards in the future. This daily card pack might be scary, but remember there's no pay to win. There's no cash shop even in the game. Okay. You buy these daily card packs with gold and you can buy like six a day and then it just doubles in price. So 4,000 gold. I know it's really scary, but they said they have no plans for a cash shop. Okay. <laughs> you open up your pack and then you get some really important things for material. Like you need all this stuff. These are all rare materials that you need for crafting, for using um, your abilities, unlocking stuff within the game itself. Like you need all this stuff, right? It's kind of weird that they package it this way, but as far as I know, I'm unlocking everything on my own here. So you can see the gold ramps up, but you can only buy so many per day. Nice, I need, I need this uh, rain mint and the spine. So you collect it and now you have more stuff to kind of work toward goals, 16,000. So that's like all my gold right there, right? I'm like, do I want to buy it or I'll hold off on it? Um, the pets, oh, I missed the pets. You can get pets and then they have various bonuses. Um, the current pet that I have has a gold find bonus to it. Let's see where it is. On the bottom right there, it says pet bonus, gold drop chance plus 7%. So there might be like XP pets or different things like that. And, um, I'm not sure, but it looks like I like more systems and more cool things. This is like one of the cutest pets too, by the way. <laughs> this is your inventory currently. We have like three artifact defensive gear. We have two ring slots and we have like two amulet slots. And then of course a weapon slot. This is an epic that I crafted. I'm pretty, pretty happy about my first epic craft. I love the Warframe approach to Pagan. And I think more games could learn from it. The same thing, I think uh, Pagan can learn from PoE and Diablo to have seasonal events, seasonal themes, seasonal leaderboards, or like temporary things and events that they can do to add an extra layer of coolness to the game on their part as well. I'm gonna continue playing this game and unlock characters and see how it feels to play. So this would be like my day one first impressions. And then the next video I do, down the line will be like a 40 to 80 hours in, depending on when I feel like making the next video. But oh, we're nearing the end of the video. Let me open up the Hero Forge and show you guys all the different skins for all the current classes. Cause I think it would be cool to know, like these are your chase items and like it's kind of cool cause you like, you want to go for it. They already have eight classes. I mean, they could add even more, right? So let's go ahead and just run through them really quick. Go to customization. So this is the Barb character. Here's the War Chief skin. Oh yeah, I won't go through every color, but at least you get to see what it would look like, you know? Yeah. Clawmore, like a dragon skin. 
Yeah, there's a purple, purple and gold. There's oh, that looks nice. Let's go to super heavy. So this makes him look more like a king's guard, like some kind of maybe like a dark paladin or something like that. I like that one. Demon skin. Oh, there it is. There, the real barb king, the aggressor. Yeah, I like that one too. And then here's Anya. This is my character I chose. I just like the blood and she's she's kind of cool. She has an assassin skin, which might be one of the first ones that I unlock. And then she has a royal blood skin. Right? Pretty nice. Knight Countress. I do like this one. And then like like the more like vampiric, I guess, kind of nature stands out a little bit. So 200,000 gold for this. So you can see like the in-game gold you earn is used to unlock like these cool transmogs or color variations. Like the first one's 150 and um, corrupted blood. And then like some of them are gold. This is the Midgar dude right here. He has a cool skin already. So then he kind of has an off the shoulder variation. One thing about him, his skins really augment the way he looks. Like this completely changes <laughs> like his whole appearance, man. And then he has the the Retributor? What the hell is this? Okay, this is some kind of Starcraft, Alien. I'm not sure, but I like it, man. I like that it completely changes the way it looks. Infernal, so it's like the first one, but more infernally. All right, cool. Very like Norse mythology, right? Then you have this guy. We were making fun of him on stream because he's like a teenage Malthiel, like, <laughs> like emo Malthiel. Come on, dad. All right. I don't want to do reaping today. His skins didn't impress me that much, but you guys can tell me in the comments if you like it. Like, I think maybe you just can't do much with him because he's like his model, maybe. But then this is like a mine. This is kind of this is kind of cool. I like this one. It's a little more pronounced. And um, yeah, I do like this. This one in particular, Death Rite. And then here's a Temple Guard one. And then the next character is Lucian. I have almost 30 shards for Lucian. He has an interesting mechanic. I didn't go over all the mechanics for all the classes yet, but he has like a duo element. Dracus skin. Ah, uh, yeah, look at that. Love that. Keeper of Whispers. Hey, like a Plague Doctor. Yo, man, just stunning. Right? And then we have Astrophor. That's interesting, I guess. Very nice. And then Theodore. That's nice. I like that. This is a what is, this is a harpy over here. This is very nice. And then the next one we have is Valeria. She's like your um dead demon hunter, I guess. Right, here's a King Killer skin. Whoops. And then the Rogue Traveler skin. There you go. Disguise royalty. A lot of hers are like more, I guess, uh, outfits, I guess, than actual complete augments. Oh, that's kind of cool. There you go. This looks like my pet down here. This guy, I want to unlock this little freaking Mowgli right here. <laughs> Bark Prince. He's like the beast master here. And then some of the, some of the color variations are nice. Like that's like this like two tone effect. Uh, Fae Child. I thought this would be a cool WoW skin, like um, Warlock or some kind of rogue thing. Maybe I just have like, um, I'm in the honeymoon phase. This game is just uh, super interesting. Like I just want to keep grinding. This is a Witch Doctor skin. This is a total Witch Doctor skin. And then you have Son of Solstice here. All right. Freaking Mowgli, man. He can heal his, um, he can like heal his pet and then he goes into beast mode like we showed earlier. And then here's Masha. He has a pirate skin, which, you know, everyone likes pirates, chat. What do you mean? And then Royal Jester. So some interesting ways to change your character. I thought I would just show at least all the skins so you can kind of see. This one's kind of a hideous skin, but, you know, you can't win them all. You know what I mean? I'm only level like 14 or whatever, so there's probably more stuff to learn and discover in the game. I will do follow-up videos if you guys like it. I'll definitely do like a 40-hour review because I personally want to play it for a while and really kind of get to end game or like make other characters, unlock some stuff. So I'll let you guys know how it goes.
If you want to see more first impressions videos, I'll put links in the description. I do like first impressions videos when we get new games like this. If you want to support the content, you can go to patreon.com slash bloodshed. Shout out to our latest patron, Texas. Texas, yo, thank you for the support, my man. Appreciate that. You can also check me out live on Twitch. I do a lot of this type of ARPG gameplay, twitch.tv slash bloodshed. I stream there Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays. And that's going to be all for me today. This is the Bubble 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 Bloodshed, and I'm out of here. Peace.